I'm leading worship this morning with Linda Weaver, our Director of Religious Education, Cynthia Young, our Music Director, and our accompanist, Jesse Leong. Mike Schmidt is running the technical side of worship with support this morning from Beth De Pasquale, who will also be serving as your usher in the chat. So if you will all center yourself right now for worship, please take some deep quieting breaths with me as Jesse leads us in the prelude. The opening words this morning are adapted from New Prayers for the High Holidays by Rabbi Jack Bremer. Now is the time for turning. The leaves are beginning to turn from green to red and orange. The birds are beginning to turn, are heading once more towards the south. The animals are beginning to turn to storing their food for the winter. For leaves, birds, and animals, Turning comes instinctually, but for us, turning, resetting doesn't come so easily. It takes an act of will for us to make a turn. It means remembering, it means breaking old habits. It means admitting that we have been wrong and that's never easy. It might mean losing face. It means starting all over again. And that's always painful. It means saying, I'm sorry. It means recognizing that we have the ability to change. These things are terribly hard to do, but unless we turn, we will be trapped forever in yesterday's ways. Let us help each other turn from callousness to sensitivity, from hostility to love, from pettiness to purpose, from envy to contentment, from carelessness to discipline, from fear to faith. Let us revive our lives as we hoped it would be from the beginning. Let us turn towards each other for in isolation, there is no life. Good morning, my name is Cynthia Young. I am the music director at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Reston. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 146, Soon the Day Will Arrive. The words will be in your chat box. Please sing along with me and Jesse. Children will smile without wondering whether on that 
Good morning. I'm Linda Weaver, the Director of Religious Education at UUCR. Our chalice lighting words this morning are by Lois Van Leer. Reverend Deborah will now light our UU Rustin chalice. You may wish to light a candle in your own home. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been open and hopeful for what may come, renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew. May we move forward with intention. In our church, we sing a covenant together every Sunday. Love is the spirit of this church. We will sing along with our very own UUCR virtual choir. The words will be in your chat box. If you are visiting us today for the first time, please accept this song as our blessing to you. Now is the time for all ages, so gather round. Tonight ends two days of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and I have a few items that are part of celebrating this holiday. First, the shofar, or ram's horn, is blown at the beginning of Rosh Hashanah to bring people's attention to the new year. It is blown other times during Rosh Hashanah and then at the end of Yom Kippur, several days later. This shofar is Reverend Deborah's father's. He used to blow it at the temple where he worshiped. And it's such an honor to have it with us today. This is challah bread. It is usually a long loaf of bread throughout most of the rest of the year, but for Rosh Hashanah, it's made into a round loaf. For many Jewish people, that is a reminder that the years are continuous. One year flows into the next without a gap. Pomegranates are also often at the table at Rosh Hashanah. And when they are eaten, people will say something like, may we be as full of good deeds, or mitzvahs in Hebrew, as the pomegranate is full of seeds so many seeds. Finally, dipping apple slices in honey is another tradition. It is a wish for a sweet new year. For the same reason, people may make apple and honey cake, and the challah bread is usually sweeter at Rosh Hashanah than it normally is, and it may have raisins added. I hope you will have an apple or something else sweet today with wishes for a sweet new year. Let's all now say Shana Tova, which is Hebrew for Happy New Year. One, two, three. Shana Tova. Parents, I hope today 
at 11.30, 12.30, or 2, you will join us for an orientation. And children, we'll see you in religious education next Sunday. Lashana Tova. This is the time in our service where we invite you to share your joys and cares for yourselves, your family, our community, and our world. We hope in sharing you'll know that you are not alone. Perhaps you might want to light a candle in your own home to mark what is in your heart as you watch the candles in our bowl in our sanctuary. The chat box is open and please make sure you're writing to all attendees. I have the sad honor of sharing with you that our member Jody Immel died yesterday morning after a more than four year struggle with cancer. We'll be sending you something later today so that you can send Bob and her daughters your condolences and care. She will be deeply missed. As we put up the slide of our candles, please enter into this time of silence and let each other's joys and concerns wash over you. Thank you, thank you. In a moment, I'm going to invite you into your own time of uh, individual time of prayer and meditation and reflection. Jesse's gonna be playing us a melody that for our Jewish uh, members will be familiar. It's called Avino Malkinu. And it dates back to the second century when the prayer that it was based on asked God to remove the drought. The tune is from the 16th century. And I want to share with you the words from Alvino Malkino, which resonated so much in my heart this year when I reread them. Here are some of them. Our creator, act with us for a new year. Remove from us all harsh decrees. Annul the intentions of our enemies. Foil the plans of our foes. Wipe out every oppressor and adversary against justice. Withhold the plague from us. And it goes on and it ends, our creator, inscribe us in the book of good life. So my friends, please, as Jesse plays this beautiful haunting melody, enter into your own time of prayer, hope, and supplication.
Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Spirit of life and love, be with us this morning. This fall day reminds us of the goodness of creation, even as our hearts are heavy with the news of the death of one of us. Our hearts are heavy as we pass the grim toll of more than 200,000 people in the US who have died from COVID disease, many of whose deaths could have been prevented. Our hearts are heavy as we think of those suffering in Louisiana and California and Oregon where climate change has devastated their lives. We hold in our hearts those among us, and there are many who are worrying about the care, the struggles of people with serious diseases, some at the end of life. We hold in our hearts those who are mourning the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the death of dear friends and family closer. And yet still we remember that life is good. We celebrate with one turning 85 and one turning 23. We celebrate the birth of a new baby, a new grandson being born in Massachusetts to join his twin sisters. We celebrate one among us who is honored by her university for her amazing work in the world. Way to go, Marsha. We know that it is in us to create the day. It is in us to find joy, to reach deep down for gratitude, to say thank you, to reach out to each other when we are hurting, to write the checks, make the phone calls, to fight for justice in our community. We give thanks this day for another chance, another day, another day to bring joy to creation. Amen, and so may it be. So we're going to share this wonderful video right now. Um, it's called Reset by the 92nd Street Y um, in New York City, and they gave me permission to show it to you today. It's called Reset. It features music and lyrics by Abigail Pogrebin and Noah Aronson, and it was shot in 19, 2019 on mobile phones by members of Jewish communities all over the world that were celebrating Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi Rubenstein, who commissioned the song, um, uh, and says this video conveys joy, uplift, and renewal in order to help us take account reset priorities and commit to better days in the year ahead. I think its message is probably even more relevant in 2020 than it was in 2019 when it was produced. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Jewish traditions, the video opens with a blowing of the shofar, the ram's horn that Linda showed you earlier. The shofar is blown at the beginning of Rosh Hashanah and then it closes Yom Kippur. It is a verbal calling us to attention to awakening in the new year. You'll see and hear a shofar at the beginning of the video and then try to listen for it at the end. Please join me in watching Reset by the 92nd Street Y. Hear that? That is the sound of renewal. Hear that? That is the sound of repair. How does the new year call you? What gives you pride and regret? Do you hear that? This is how we reset. Search my teeth. 
just love that so much. I hope you enjoyed it. When I was growing up, Rosh Hashanah was just a day off that I got from school that my Christian friends didn't get. And as a teenager, it mostly meant that I got to buy a new dress and I got to flirt with the boys in my confirmation class during the parts of the service that were deemed um, inappropriate for children. Like all, almost all Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah is, was also, and still is, about food. Homemade chicken soup and matzo balls, simis, which is a carrot pudding, brisket, kugel, a noodle pudding, challah, and then, as Linda showed us, honey and apples. I want to give you just a little bit of background on the Jewish New Year. In the Jewish calendar, we are beginning the year 5781. The words Rosh Hashanah in Hebrew transliterate to the head of the year. Unlike other Jewish holidays, it is not mentioned in the Bible, but emerges later in the Talmud and the Mishnah. Rosh Hashanah always begins the night of a new moon of the first Monday of the Hebrew calendar. And that's why it's date on our calendar, which is not a lunar calendar, changes each year. But to Jews, it's celebrated the same day every year. Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the Jewish high holidays, which are also known as the days of awe. 10 days that are meant, in the words of the song we just heard, to renew, to repair, and to reset. The high holidays end on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which we will honor next week. The central legend is that on Rosh Hashanah, the Book of Life is opened. And during the next 10 days, God judges each and every person for their fate in the coming year. And then the book is closed at the end of Yom Kippur. The legend says that the truly righteous are automatically inscribed for a good year ahead. But the rest of us, and of course that means all of us, have these 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to transform might be decreed, to ask for forgiveness from those we have wronged, and to commit to being our better selves in the year ahead. And we get to do it each and every year because we never really reach that level of righteousness. There is a prayer that is said on both Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. It's called the Unatane Tokaf, and it's about the Book of Life. It was written in the eighth century, the eighth century. And when I read it to you, I think you're gonna hear words that hit me so hard in this year of pandemic and our national reckoning with racism and white supremacy and our fears about the upcoming election. I think we could have written this prayer right now. So in English, it reads, on Rosh Hashanah it is inscribed, and on Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many shall pass away, and how many shall be born? Who shall live, and who shall die? Who shall reach the end of their days, and who shall not? Who shall perish this year by water or by fire? Who by famine and who by thirst? Who by earthquake and who by plague? Who shall have rest and who shall wander? Who shall be at peace and who shall be pursued? Who shall be at rest and who shall be tormented? Who shall be exalted and who will be brought low? Who will become rich and who will be impoverished? And then it concludes more hopefully, but repentance, teshuva, prayer, tefillah, righteousness, and charity, tzedakah, avert our severe decree. In other words, how we live, how we choose to reset will make a difference in how we will be judged. Universalists in the 19th century named that salvation by character. The high holidays are filled with the most basic spiritual questions. Questions that our ancient ancestors knew were so important that they created a period of time for them to be addressed each and every year. Questions that we struggle with, like them, thousands of years later. How do we make meaning in our lives in the face of our certain death? How do we understand the tragedies that befall people? 
the tragedies that befall us still. How do we repent and repair when we let ourselves and each other down? How do we serve the world? How do we, in the words of the song, hit reset somehow? Have we ever needed a reset more? Do you remember the Kubler-Ross stages of grief of dealing with a fatal illness? I think we've been going through those steps since March. First, there was denial. Oh, COVID couldn't be so bad. Maybe we'd be in quarantine for two weeks, a month tops. Then there was bargaining. If we wear a mask, if we wash our hands, um, this will be over soon. Then comes anger. How many of you like me have had more than a few minutes of being furious about this strange situation we are in or find yourself yelling at the TV news? The next step is depression. And I know from my conversations with so many of you that many of us six months in are feeling that depression now. How did this become our lives? When will this end? The final stage of grief, you may remember, is acceptance. This is our life now. How do we make the best of it? So my friends, I'm gonna challenge you. What would it mean if we use the next two weeks intentionally to reset, to do an inner review, to reach out to each other, to say, I'm sorry, and ask forgiveness, to think about, what is this strange time calling from us? I read an article last week that said that crisis often leads to clarity. So what are you learning about yourselves, your relationships, your work, how you want to be in the world? What could you do metaphorically, but also literally to reset yourself for a good year in the book of life? And how might we reset as a congregation? We have many important plans in the year ahead, in addition to continuing, frankly, just to adjust to primarily connecting online due to the very high risk of COVID transmission at in-person religious services. UCR is gonna be engaging in some other important efforts this year, like finalizing and approving our strategic plan, voting on the pilot governance system, Deciding if you want to be an eighth principle congregation committed to anti racism and anti oppression, undertaking energy and safety audits, and so much more. During the past four years, we have changed as a congregation. We've changed rapidly. We've grown by almost 50%. We've added 130 new members. Our budget has grown to over $600,000 a year. We created and launched Rest and Pride. We initiated neighborhood circles. We built the chancel. We expanded the minister's office. We created a monarch butterfly station. We raised the monies to replace our piano. We adopted a new vision statement. Are you all aware of how much change that is for any congregation in a short period of time? So as we enter this new church year, I think it's time to reset. To, we need to think about who you want to be, how you want to be with each other for the next four years. What is the most important work you can do to nurture our spiritualities and help heal our hurting world? And what I want to tell you is no matter what you all decide or vote on in the strategic plan or the governance structure, what I'm really hoping is you will recommit yourself to going deeper into creating a culture of trust and appreciation, of kindness and compassion in all we do. What might a reset mean to you, UCR? What might it mean to you? At the end of the book of Deuteronomy, God says to Moses, I have set before you life or death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your de descendants may live. Life is precious, my friends. As I say to you all the time in very many different ways, this life is not a dress rehearsal. So use this opportunity to reset 
to decide how to create your own best life. Understanding that treating each other well, including forgiving each other, is how we bring the divine to life. This year, this year especially, I hope you recommit to working for justice, to helping heal the world, to perhaps putting ourselves on the line for freedom. My friends, the world needs you. Choose life. Choose to bless the world. May we all be inscribed for a sweet year in the book of life. Lashana Tova, Happy New Year. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 415, the last hymn in our gray hymnal, Avenu Shalom Alechem, which means we bring peace to you. In Jewish tradition, during this lively energetic song, it is customary to bang on the table while singing. So feel free to bang on a table or pat your knees or clap your hands as you sing along. The words will be in your chat box. Please join me and Jesse in singing Avenu Shalom Alechem. Thank you, Cynthia and Jesse. I'm so grateful for uh, your endeavoring and, and working on playing um, this music that's so important to those of us from Jewish backgrounds. The closing words this morning are actually words that I wrote for the UUA at their request for the worship web. They're called the days of awe begin with us. The days of awe begin with us. May the next 10 days be days of reflection, introspection, and peace. May we prepare ourselves for the changes in the year to come. May it be a good year. May it be a healthy year. May it be a year of peace all around the globe. May it be a year of peace within ourselves. May we live our lives with integrity, service, and love. May we be blessed with the strength of this community, of our family, of our friends. May we remember what is truly important and may we remember to be grateful each and every day. May we all be inscribed another year in the book of life. Lashana Tova, Tikatebu. Our post lead today, which Jesse is about to sing and play for us is the original Hebrew song on which our hymn 146 is based. Bashana Haba'a was written by Israeli composer Nurit Hirsch with words by Israeli lyricist Ehud Manor. Beth will put the Hebrew words to the chorus in the chat box now. I'm going to read them once for you so that we can be ready to join in with Jesse when the time comes. Od tire, od tire, kama tov yiye. Bashana, Bashana, Haba. This means you will see, you will see how good it will be next year. So when Jesse gets to the chorus, we can all sing along with him in Hebrew. Then we will sing the chorus once through again in English as well. This fun, hopeful song presents yet another perfect opportunity to bang on the table while we sing. So let's all sing, clap, bang, and dance together. Bashana. Haba. Ah. 
Ashana Hava Nesheval Havi Peset Benis for Tiporim no de Dut Iladim Bachusha Isaha Kuto Feset Ben Hadid in the poor Asadot. Otire, Otire, Kamatovi, Mashana, Mashana, Hava. Otire, Otire, Kamatovi, Mashana, Mashana, Hava. Otire, Otire, Kamatovi, Mashana, Mashana, Hava. O tire, o tire, kama tovi, bashana, bashana, haba. One more time in English. O tire, o tire, kama tovi, bashana, bashana, haba. O tire, o tire, kama tovi, bashana, bashana, haba. Thank, thank you, Jesse. And Jesse got so carried away, he sang it three times in Hebrew. Um, and uh, uh, what I want to tell you is Jesse shared with us, he has never sung in Hebrew until this week. So thank you, Jesse, for uh, all your work on that. Uh, um, so my friends, this is the time in our service as we conclude that we will invite you to make an offering. Our collection plate is different than your pledge payments. It's the way each week we ask you to make an offering as part of your witness and gratitude for this worship service and our time together. We invite all of you, members, friends, and visitors to enter the link in your chat room uh, that will be in the chat room and on the slide into your smartphone, and you will quickly be able to donate to our beloved church community. Checks mailed to the church are also gratefully received. So, Listen to the music that Jesse will play for us, make your offering, and then after this slide is over, um, please stay with us. Uh, you log off and then join in our virtual Greet Your Neighbor space to say hello to each other and then have some conversations. I hope this week you will use your Greet Your Neighbor space to talk about your thoughts and experiences about how you might want to reset, what your hopes are for the year to come. And so my friends, it is that time in the service where I say to you, go now in peace. May your real service begin. Lashana Tova Tikatevu. Happy New Year to you all.